Hey guys, so as my Daytona build comes along and is almost ready, I wanted to show the old engine coming out of the car and I thought it'd be really interesting to take it apart and see what the damage was. This is a 2006 Dodge Charger RT Daytona with a 5.7 liter Hemi V8 and it dropped a valve seal which caused a lot of further damage. I did make an entire video dedicated to looking at this engine flaw and going more in depth on the issue, including what it was, what it affected, and how to possibly prevent it. So check that video out in the top right corner for a lot more information. Also, please note that this issue is on the 2003 to 2008 Hemis. The 2009 and up Eagle Hemis have their own various issues, but not this one. So before the new engine is ready, today we're lifting the engine out of the car and then taking it apart to see what kind of damage was done to the cylinder heads, pistons, and even the block. So let's get into it. So first off, here's some footage from lifting the stock Hemi engine out of the car. I will talk over the footage as you watch to kind of give you some more information. But going back to the issue, the valve seemed to drop if the engine has been running pretty hot, then it gets turned off while it's still hot, and then gets started again shortly after. Affected vehicles are anywhere from 60,000 miles and up, but usually it's over 100,000. On this vehicle, I was driving on the highway for two hours, pulled off and immediately filled up my gas tank, then went to start it and it made some awful noises, shaking and then it wouldn't start again. And this happened without the engine overheating or anything, and no warning whatsoever at 110,000 miles. There's a whole lot of different rumors around what the exact root cause is. Some say it's due to the engine overheating, some say it's from revving too high, and some say it's from MDS. The most common reason that people believe though, it happens because of overheating. Basically when you shut off the engine when it's too hot, you get a heat spike or heat soak, and the temperatures rise after shutdown. Basically when you shut off the engine when it's too hot, you will get a heat spike or heat soak, and the temperatures actually rise after shutdown, and the head temperatures are not even in a valve seat could drop. Others do say the MDS causes it, as the drop seats are sometimes on the cylinders that are turned off by MDS, where some of the cylinders are not functioning, and the temperature levels are thus uneven. And one other cool thing to point out, you can actually see some metal shrapnel in the exhaust pipe here, so that's from the valves or pistons, as we'll get into. Here's more footage of the engine out of the car. Once I got over the initial shock that my engine was toast, I think it's just fascinating to see this kind of stuff, like the empty engine bay, or a view of the car from underneath, looking kind of like a skeleton. Anyways, in about a minute or two, I'll show the actual internals of the engine and damage as well, so stay tuned for that. So now we can take a look at the substantial damage that occurred in the engine because of this issue and look at a bit of the technical aspects of how things got like this. So we've actually got damage here to the cylinder heads, pistons, and even the block. First up is the cylinder heads and the passenger side cylinder 6 intake valve seat dropped here. The bigger one is the intake valve and the smaller one is the exhaust valve. You can see that there's tons of shrapnel and damage to the cylinder heads as there's lots of pieces kind of smashed in on the sides. To explain why, in the head of the intake valve there is a ring, which is called a valve seat. 
the intake valve closes up against the metal ring. This is made of a different material, steel, rather than the aluminum head, which is stronger. When the parts get hot, the aluminum head and the valve seat metal will expand at different rates, so the valve seat will fall out of the head and it won't be seated properly, and that's called dropping a valve seat. After the seat drops, it's now hanging where the piston should be, but the piston is still slamming into the area because that's what it's supposed to do. The ring is very brittle, so it would have started cracking into different pieces and getting crunched up by the piston. So in other words, the valve seat is now in the way of the piston, and things just don't fit as there's only so much space between the head and the piston. And that's why you see so much shrapnel on the cylinder head, as the piston is crushing those extra pieces into it. In fact, it does look like three cylinder heads also have the shrapnel damage on them. So that would be caused as the pieces travel from side to side, and those small pieces of either valve seat or even piston go from one cylinder through the intake port, through the manifold, and then into the other cylinders, and then they will subsequently damage those pistons as well, as they keep slamming into those pieces, but it's just to a lesser degree than cylinder 6. So that also means that there's tiny pieces in the intake manifold, and you're not able to reuse that either, or the material inside will damage the engine once again. One thing to note is that if the ring just drops and sits there and hangs on the valve, this damage will not occur, and you can just fix the heads, which is a much cheaper repair. Usually when just one valve seat drops, you can still start the car, which I did in the driveway, and by starting the car like that and having the engine running, all of this damage happens since the piston slammed into the valve seat in front of it. We can also see that three different pistons are damaged to varying degrees. The other ones aren't as bad as cylinder 6 though, as that piston got totally deformed, it's mutilated, it's caved in, as that one kind of took the brunt of the damage hitting up against the valve seat. So the damage carried to three cylinders and damaged those pistons and cylinder heads. Now it also looks like cylinder 6 has scratches on the block internally. It might be pretty hard to pick up on camera, but they are there. The piston is going in and out of the cylinder, and once the piston got severely damaged and deformed, it will scrape and scratch the cylinder wall ever so slightly as it travels through it. So that will result in some damage to the block, as you can see here. So that's the end of this video showing the damage on my 5.7 liter Hemi V8. We've covered a lot and I hope you guys found it interesting and enjoyable to kind of look through the engine and see all the damage that was done. What do you guys think about this flaw I've described? And for those of you with one of these Hemis, have you experienced it as well? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more Mopar content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.